The Crown Plaza gas station is back open for business with people coming in and out, but this is where everything kicked off overnight. The Pentagon is warning members of the military not to use those popular DNA testing kits, saying that they pose a security risk. A sign on the front door here really says it all due to the weather. Our store will be closing at 8 p.m. tonight. I want you to take a look at what's going on behind us because one look and you will see that the pedestal out here, it is now totally empty. The display is about more than just laughs and smiles. Also some sound medical advice out here from an impressively drawn Dr. Anthony Fauci. Wash your hands and don't touch your face. You might remember some of this video. It shows a man getting hit by lightning while walking his dog. If you were traveling on I-55, you may have noticed this. It's a caravan of trucks going well below the speed limit. There are still businesses able to stay open. Blues tonight at 7. But the mayor says overall, he estimates they've lost 80% of their revenue. This business was hit hard by flooding last year. If you take a look at the beams out here, you'll see exactly how high the water level got, causing a lot of damage to this property. We found this while walking in the street, a shell casing just about 100 feet from her kid's bedroom window. Just to give you an idea of how vast and fast this flooding is, we're just over a mile from the banks of the Mississippi, but already you can see that water is coming through these sandbags and experts say it will flood and overtop this area by 5 p.m. Friday. The doors don't open to 730 and when they do, you can expect there will be a lot of attention on this race, not just here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, but across the nation. This is the second day they're cutting plywood in Winfield, headed for the Pin Oak Levee. Organizers have been putting together this retaining wall along the lower portions of the levee in hopes that they can save about 40 homes from flooding. But they knew they would need help to make that happen, so volunteers came out in force, including nine-year-old Eli Nielsen, who hasn't even seen the levee he's helping to reinforce. No, I haven't, and I bet it's gonna, it's like big. Nielsen is here with the Mormon Church, everyone pitching in, even though some had some recent long distance travel. When I found out yesterday we're getting people for the call. We were up in uh, Colorado. We put the boys in the car and we drove on out and decided we wanted to help. These bags are just some of the thousands already in place. They're adding extra height here, wrapping the plywood retaining wall with plastic since the high water will linger for days. Eli says he's happy to help during his summer vacation. I actually feel pretty good. I kind of didn't really think about it in the first place. I was just like, dig enough sand, I could do better than this. And until that water is gone, Winfield will need those extra workers. Absolutely. Call to serve and anybody who wants to come out uh, can come and join. This part of the river, Winfield, is not expected to crest until Saturday. In Winfield, Sarah Maki, five on your side. 2020 started with a stroke of good luck for Daryl Smith. $50 found on the side of the road. So he posted about it online and he called his mom. As soon as I opened my car door, bro, $20 bill, voila. I mean, a $50 bill, voila, right there. And I say, that's my money, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And he was like, wow. And I'm like, this is going to be your lucky day. I'm like, this is your lucky day. And then I get a call 30 minutes later, he had been shot. Then I get a call five minutes later, said he was dead. In the name of Jesus. About a mile away, oh, hallelujah. congregants at Williams Temple Church of God in Christ begin a 10-day prayer marathon, asking God to end St. Louis's gun violence. We're calling on you right now, Father, to end this violence in our city, Father. Lord, have mercy on across the counties, Father. But as they talk, thank you, Father. The numbers add up. Three people killed in a quadruple shooting on South Jefferson. Another man found dead here on Guinevere. Not many days hence, they're going to see a change. They're going to look at the statistics. But of course, the shooting didn't stop there. Annette Smith said she heard about Daryl's shooting on North Euclid while she was at the mall, just moments after a discussion about gun violence with her neighbor, talking about the then four people killed on the first day of this new year. I'm like, that's crazy and didn't know he was going to be the fifth. Is there anything that people can do to help you? Just pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
So Smith says that her son was a big kid at heart, always laughing and trying to make others laugh. The police narrative for his case does not list any arrests. And as far as those prayers, well, tonight there has already been another shooting since we talked to the Smiths. So this time a man was taken to the hospital, barely breathing unconscious with a gunshot wound to the chest. Tonight in St. Louis, Sarah Maki, five on your side. Christmas Day takes a violent turn as four teens were shot in St. Louis today. I'm Sarah Maki. Thank you for joining us tonight. Two teens were shot in South City. Another two were shot on Alice Avenue in the city's north side. Our Robert Townsend talked to neighbors who say that their holiday was ruined by that gun violence. Parts of Interstate 55 are back open after a deadly motorcycle crash. That crash happened this afternoon on 55 near Route Z near Peavley. The Missouri State Highway Patrol says that a motorcyclist was killed when an SUV hit him. The driver of the SUV was also taken to the hospital. We've learned an off-duty police officer is the person who shot an intruder at a Belleville apartment complex yesterday. Police say that Stephen Madden tried to carjack a woman in the parking lot, but when he failed, he then ran into a nearby apartment, holding two people inside hostage. An off-duty police officer who also lives in that complex heard the commotion. When he came to the apartment, reportedly identifying himself as a police officer, he ordered Madden to drop the gun, but Madden refused, so the officer shot him twice. Madden is now okay, going to be okay, and the officer does work for the Bell Ridge Police Department. He was also taken to the hospital with minor injuries to his face. New tonight, it was a beautiful day outside with temperatures nearing the 70s. Plenty of people out and about around St. Louis. Our Brandon Murano hit a few of the popular spots on this unusually warm Christmas day. Brandon was pretty good on the skates and we definitely don't want to beat up the weather guy. We had two great days in a row, so will this warmer weather stick around? We're going to get a first check of our forecast with our meteorologist, Tracy Hinson. Tracy, I thought people would be loving this. You know, I in Alton, members at One Church, they say that a lot of people offer a communal meal for Thanksgiving, but there are fewer options for Christmas. So now they're filling in the gap for people who need a place to come together. This is the sixth year that they've set up a dinner at St. John Missionary Baptist Church. It takes about a week to prepare, and you can see that the steam is coming off the hot meals there. They say that a lot of people who come through are single parents, maybe homeless, low income, or they're just spending the holiday on their own. That event is run with volunteers, and they say it will be back again next year. It was a busy Christmas day for animals at the new aquarium. The anticipated attraction, it opened today and thousands of people went to check it out for themselves, including our Jasmine Payut, who takes us inside. The aquarium will be open this weekend as well. General admission tickets, they are $25, but you can buy them online or at Union Station. As 2019 winds down, we're looking back at some of the people in the St. Louis area who are making a difference. And as our Mike Bush reports, tonight's story, isn't about a person. In Paris, holiday services were not held at Notre Dame Cathedral for the first time since the French Revolution. That's because of the fire that tore through the famed church earlier this year. That fire destroyed the roof and collapsed its spire. Now the rector of the cathedral says that the landmark is still so fragile, there's a chance that the church might not be entirely saved. So cleanup efforts are still underway. The rector also says that restoration isn't likely to begin until 2021. It was a first for some members of Britain's royal family today. Prince George and Princess Charlotte, they joined their parents, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, to walk to a morning church service. Their younger brother, Prince Louis, he stayed at home along with Prince Philip. The walk happens every year with senior members of the royal family while they spend their holiday at the Queen's Sandringham estate. Now that the shopping, the shipping, the wrapping is all over, all of that waste might be clogging up our landfills, but a lot of that can be recycled. The EPA says that Americans produce 25% more trash between Thanksgiving and Christmas. You can recycle things like delivery boxes, product packages, and food containers that are empty, clean, and dry. Wrapping paper can also go in the recycling bin, as long as it doesn't have glitter or foil. Things that shouldn't go in the recycling are dead batteries, cell phones, garland, and Christmas lights. So what if you're looking to get rid of your Christmas tree? Well, luckily there are a few places that you can start dropping off your trees, like in Forest Park, O'Fallon Park, and the Carondelet Park. There are also loca locations in St. Charles County and Edwardsville. We have posted a link to all of those drop-off locations on our app. Just open it up and then tap the As Seen on TV section.